Hello, we've had a few videos on generalized linear mix models. We've seen how to use generalized linear mix models from more of the um, user side. And now we're going to look at some of the statistical theory. In particular, we're going to look at the likelihood function for a generalized linear mixed model, which are a little bit tricky because of the random effects. And we're going to look at how we can um, use the structure of the random effects to uh, factor up the likelihood. So if we let theta be the vector of all our parameters, so in other words, theta is theta and nu, and then we can also define u to be our vector of random effects. So that has density f of theta given u, and then y given u is our observed data conditional on the random effects, and that has this distribution here, f of theta um, for y conditional on u. Then we can find the joint density of y and u, and of course we can find that just by multiplying these two densities by each other. Okay, so our likelihood is a function of the data, is a function of our parameters given the data. In particular, it's only the observed data. So random effects are not observed, so we need to integrate out our random effects. So we take our joint density of u and y, and we integrate with respect to u. So if u is a q-dimensional vector, then we're integrating over our Q. And so this will leave just our observed data Y. So that's our likelihood and anything we'd wanna do with this, such as maximum likelihood, calculate some derivatives to get Fisher information and standard errors, that sort of thing. We would do all of our likelihood based inference with this integral, which represents our likelihood here. Um, so as you can probably tell, this is going to be a little bit tricky because we're using this integral that's a q-dimensional integral. Now, if we have um, certain random effect structures, then this can be simplified quite a bit. So say that we have a pretty simple random effect structure. We just have one random effect per observation. So for example, maybe uh, we have, let's look at the log mean. Just make it super simple. Let's just say it's equal to beta naught plus beta one times our x. And then we just have one univariate random effect. Then we'll have um, the ability to factor this up into q univariate integrals. Okay, but what about other random effect structures? So in particular, we had our salamander random effect structure with all those crossed random effects. So let's draw a little picture here. We have, let's just come up with a few names of salamanders. So Sally, um, Gabby, Donna, and then let's have some male random effects, some male names, um, Fred, George, Harry. All right, so um, since Sally is in an experiment with Fred, and then later in an, another an experiment with George and another trial with Harry, then we would draw a line between Sally and Fred, Sally and George, and Sally and Harry. And similarly, if Gabby is in a trial with each one of these, then we would draw a line connecting set Gabby with each one of these salamanders. And similarly, since Donna is in a trial with each one of these, then we would connect Donna to each one of these male salamanders. Okay, so this is what we 
mean when we say cross random effects? We see that Sally is connected to multiple of the male salamanders. And similarly, we can see that Fred is connected to multiple female salamanders. So a crossed random effects is when we have um, one of these nodes, say uh, one of these male nodes is connected to more than one male node. and or a female node is connected to more than one male node. Okay, more generally, we would say that we have crossed random effects if drawing a similar graph like this, one of the random effects from one of the variance components is connected to more than one random effect from the other variance component. So in other words, a random effect from new one is connected to more than one random effect from new two. Okay, so let's contrast this to something with um, without crossed random effects. So say that we have one experiment with Sally and Fred. So we draw a line between them. We have an experiment with Gabby and George. And we have another experiment with Hannah and Harry. And we connect those. And in particular, Sally is not in an experiment with George. Sally is not in an experiment with Harry. Gabby is in an experiment with neither Fred nor George. Hannah is in an experiment with neither Fred nor Harry. So we can see that Sally is not tangled up with more than one male random effect. Gabby is not tangled up with more than one male random effect and so on. For any one of these random effects, it's only connected to one random effect from the other variance component. Okay, so for something like this, we would be able to factor up our likelihood pretty easily into um, in this case, two-dimensional integrals, because we would integrate out one female random effect and one male random effect. Um, so that's how we get two. So if we had an experiment like this with plenty of salamanders where we could um, use a new salamander for each one, then uh, it would be pretty straightforward, pretty easy. Okay, but since we have an experiment more like this with the crossed random effects, then we cannot factor up our likelihood into these very small dimensional integrals. And in particular in the salamander experiment, we started off with 120 salamanders. And these were split into three groups. So 40, 40, And then for each one of these groups, we have 20 females, 20 males. Um, and we have, for these 20 females and 20 males, we have 10 female rough butts, 10 female white sides, and 10 male rough butts, 10 male white sides. From here, scientists split these 40 
salamanders into two groups. So one group had five, 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 five. So five female rough butts, five female white sides, five male rough butts, five male white sides, and then we had another group of five, 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 five. Okay, so. Then at this point, we have six closed groups of 20 salamanders. We have 20 here, we have 20 here, and then um, we have three more like this. Okay, so let's just look at one particular closed group of 20 salamanders. Um, then we have the first female salamander, the second female salamander, the third female salamander, down to the 10th female salamander. And similarly, we have male salamander number one down to male salamander number 10. And each one of these salamanders is in six experiments, six trials with different male salamanders. So the first female salamander might be in a trial with male one, male two, male three, male four, male five, and male six. And then the first male is in a bunch of experiments as well. Each salamander is in six trials here. So male one is already connected to female one, and maybe it's also connected to female two, female three, female four, female five, and female six. And similarly, we can just continue drawing six lines out of each one of these different salamanders. So maybe by the time we get to the last one, our picture is looking something like that. Lines all over the place. So we have 20 salamanders all tangled up. We can't break this graph up into any smaller subgraphs. This is the smallest subgraph that we get. If we continue looking at all the other subgraphs, we'll see that the other subgraphs are not connected to this one. So let's say that we're looking at this one from over here. Now I've added another graph representing these 20 salamanders over here. So we can see that these 20 salamanders are all tangled up together. And these 20 salamanders are all tangled up together. But the salamanders over here are not tangled up with the salamanders over here. And so that means that when we go to factor our likelihood, we can factor it into six integrals, each of 20 dimension, and we get 20 dimensions because we have 10 here, 10 here, meaning a total of 20 salamanders over in this group. And again, 10 here, 10 here, so 20 salamanders over in this group. And we have six of these graphs. And so we have six by 20. We have six integrals. And each integral has 100, has 20 dimensions. In other words, in each integral, we're integrating out 20 random effects. So in other words, what we're saying is that when we draw out one of these graphs that represent the random effects, we can look at those graphs, look at the dimension of the smallest graph that's not tangled up with any other graph. So for example, this graph is not tangled up with this graph. So we look in this graph, we see if we can untangle it anymore, we cannot untangle it anymore. And now we just simply count how many random effects we have over here. And we have 10 females, 10 males. So we have 20 random effects. And so that means that the smallest we can, in, the smallest we can factor up that integral is into a product of six 
integrals, and each integral has 20 dimensions. So when you hear people say that cross random effects are hard, what they mean is that if you're trying to do any sort of like numerical integration, this is going to be quite the beast because um, numerically integrating a 20 dimensional integral is not very realistic at this time, maybe in like 2030, 2040, that'll be more doable. But for now, computers can't handle numerically integrating a 20 dimensional integral. So that is why we need to resort to other methods to approximate our likelihood. Um, we're using other methods to approximate the integral, which of course represents our likelihood.